we wanted to do this study because we really think decision tools are helpful to patients. But when we looked at this literature, we noticed that many, many people were promising large savings, millions in fact of savings, and we weren't that confident that the studies could prove that. So we wanted to take a much closer look at the studies themselves to see what evidence we could find. So in order to investigate the question that Glenn had, we wanted to do a thorough search of the literature. So we um, made a plan, we registered that plan, published it, made it publicly available for anybody to look at and comment on. And we then did the search. We found over 1,500 articles um, having to do with shared decision-making, cost and savings, economic analyses. Um, of those, over half were commentaries or editorials, and all of those were positive claims of potential savings. When we really dug into the economic analysis, which ones had uh, economic analyses, we found seven studies with eight analyses. Of those, four found significant savings. Two of those were from the same study. So not quite as much as we thought we would find. Once we, once we had that group, we wanted to assess the quality of the studies. So we used a grading criteria developed by Drummond to assess the quality of the economic analyses. Um, they were modest, right? The, the studies scored about a five out of 10 with a higher score being better. We then looked at the study's risk of bias according to Cochrane criteria. Uh, there, the median score was around a four out of six but a lower score is better. After we'd appraised the studies and looked at the ones that had found significant savings, we realized that the savings ranged from $8 per person up to $3,000 per person. And many different techniques were utilized. It was hard to pool things together to arrive at a firm conclusion. Looking at this information with the, the quality appraisal, the risk of bias appraisal, uh, we ended up coming out of this feeling more cautious about potential for savings than when we first went in. The analysis that we've done kind of shows that there's no large body of evidence confirming that these tools lead to large savings. That's number one. And we've got therefore policymakers thinking that they do and maybe it's the risk that by overpromising there'll be some disappointment that they don't lead to large savings. So that's the thing that we needed to clear up. But the second issue I think it's important to say is that it's not that we don't want these tools used. In fact, we really think that these tools are a good in and of themselves. They provide the, there's an ethical imperative to use tools like this to better inform patients. But let me just finish by saying that it's probably true that when patients are very well informed, they choose less risky things to do and in the overall run of things, that probably leads to more safety and probably more cost savings. But the current studies that we have don't prove that yet.